I would like to sincerely apologize for any unnecessary noises that you may have heard in the background. I share a room with my little brother who has Down syndrome and it's really hard for me to have him behave sometimes as well as have him go outside since I am the one who is taking care of him. Rest assured I did raise my voice for it to be audible and I also performed the procedures to the best of my ability. Good day everyone, my name is Sunny A. Galaura. I'm a first year nursing student of Davo Doctors College Nursing Program and I am from BSN 111H Group 30. And today I will be demonstrating the taking of the vital signs, namely the taking of the temperature. It would be conducted in two ways, um, axillary and also oral method. Next is the assessing of the peripheral pulses, respiration and also blood pressure. Now for the needed equipment, um, first, soap and clean. Um, a sink with clean running water. This is for our medical hand washing. Um, hand sanitizer for our hand sanitation and also for the sanitation of our equipment. Um, thermometer. Um, for this video, I will be using the digital thermometer. Cotton pads or cotton balls with alcohol or you can use um, alcohol pads. This is for us to sanitize our equipments very important to sanitize our e equipments may it be before after or even during the procedures um, next is our pen and paper this is for us to jot down our data for the taking of the blood pressure we have um, the spigmo manometer and also um, the stethoscope and lastly our um, wristwatch with a um, second hand Okay, so today I will be taking the oral temperature of the client. So um, prior to any um, procedures, I must first verify the client's identity, introduce myself, and also explain to the client what would be the procedure that we will be conducting. So sir, um, hi, good day. My name is Sunny Ega Laura. I'm a first year nursing student and I will be your nursing student for today. So you, um, I will be taking your oral temperature. So may I know? Uh, may I please know your name? I'm Harvey Galaura. Okay. So your name is Harvey A. Galaura. So do you have any problems with um, your throat or also your head? No. Any problem with opening your jaw, uh, your mouth? No. Okay. So asking that to the patient will help us elicit if the patient is suitable for um, the taking of the oral temperature. Okay, sir. So um, today I will be taking your um, oral temperature and I just want you to open your mouth. So is that okay? Okay, so I will not be performing the hand hygiene. This is for me to deter any spread of um, infectious microorganism or diseases. So I'll just um, perform my hand washing and then I'll get back to you. hand washing I did also inserted my gloves this is for me to um, this is for me to have a barrier between my skin and also the skin of my client this is for me to deter any spread of microorganism and infectious diseases so now I will be providing for the clients um, privacy by the means of closing the door if the patient is in the private room or if the patient is in the ward I will be sliding the curtains so um, sir um, I'll close the door Okay, so I'll close the door. Okay, so um, I'm done with closing the door now. I will now position the client for the assessment proper. So um, for the, the client's case, um, he can sit properly. So I just need him um, to sit properly. So can you please sit properly? Okay, so... Um, I have wearing my gloves and then I will now start with the assessing of the temperature. So um, before inserting the thermometer inside the client's mouth, I will first disinfect the, um, the thermometer. This is for me to um, sanitize my thermometer. So with the use of the alcohol swabs. Okay, so I... Okay, so how we can clean the thermometer, um, just simply grab your alcohol swab and then the technique here is that um, before, diba, before um, inserting the thermometer inside. So 
um, before we can um, swipe the um, body of the thermo thermometer first and then uh, with firm circular motion down to the probe. Okay. Okay, so now that we are done, I'll be discarding the cotton. Okay, so I'm done with sanitizing the um, thermometer. I'll just wait for like a few seconds in order for the alcohol to be dry. Thermometer is now dry. I'll be, um, um, I will be starting the oral temperature. So can you please um, remove your mask? Okay. So can you please open your mouth? Okay, so for um, inserting the thermometer inside the client's mouth, you must first let the patient open his mouth. Okay, so can you please open your mouth? And then can you please lift your tongue? Okay, so we will be placing the probe of the thermometer inside or like under the tongue. We can see the frenulum. In either side, we can see, um, we can uh, put the, okay. Okay, so I'll, turning on. Okay, so can you please um, close? Okay, we can close your mouth. Okay, so by that, I'll just wait for like a, um, a couple of a minute, um, according to the manufacturer of the thermometer, I'll just wait for at least um, one minute in order for me to elicit the temperature. So can you please hold your um, thermometer, okay? So, yeah. okay? so we'll just wait for a, a minute. Okay, so placing the um, ter, uh, the probe of the thermometer on either side of the frenulum, um, that is the usual or the normal location wherein we put our uh, thermometer. Okay, so um, that's um, less than one minute, but um, according to the manufacturer's note, we can just um, wait for the beeping sound. Okay, so your temperature is 36.9. So uh, by that, I will be recording the, um, the results to the client sheet. Okay, so I have now recorded the temperature of the client. Um, and we must first check no, if it, uh, the temperature that we have elicited is um, too high or too low. So if there are instances we're in, the temperature of the client is too high or too low, we can um, do the procedure again. This is for us to have an accurate finding. So um, by the temperature, um, 36.9, um, I see that it is in the normal. So we don't, uh, we can't do the procedure again. Okay, so um, um, I have removed the thermometer um, inside the client's mouth and then I will be sanitizing it again. So still with the use of my alcohol swab, okay, so the technique of cleaning um, the thermometer after it has been used is from the uh, probe of the thermometer up to the body with um, firm circular motion. This is for us to clean, um, entirely clean the thermometer. So I'll start with the probe and then to towards the body. Then we can do it the um, circular motion around the thermometer. And then, okay, so I'm done with it. Then I'll discard the cotton. Okay, so um, after that, this is subject for another washing. This is for us to ensure that it is clean for another use. So uh, um, after, uh, before that, I will be placing the thermometer inside the appropriate container. Okay, so I will be removing my gloves. also discard the glove okay so um, let's move on with the documentation so I'll just um, tell the patient um, what could be the finding so um, your temperature is in the normal okay so okay so we don't have to do that um, procedure again because it is in the normal range so okay so do you have any questions okay so after that I will be documenting the um, findings.
Okay, so we're done with the um, taking of the temperature already. Now, let's go down to the axillary method. So, prior to performing any procedure, I must first introduce myself to the client and also let the client know what would be the procedures that they will be conducting. So, um, hello, my name is Sunny Egalara. I am a student, I'm your student nurse for today. So, today we will be taking your um, body temperature with the use of your underarms. So, is it okay for me to take your um, temperature? Yes. Okay, so uh, may I ask if you have um, any lesions or wounds or any problems with your arms? No problem. Okay, so asking that to the client will help us elicit if it is um, the taking of the temperature um, through the axillary method is suitable. So, for this um, case, we don't have any problem since um, he hasn't, I uh, haven't uh, reported any problems. So, um, that's good to hear. Okay, so I will perform the hand hygiene before I'll conduct the um, assessment. So, um, I'll just um, do my hand washing first. So I'm done with um, doing my medical hand washing and also um, drying my hands. So uh, the purpose of that is to prevent any um, spreading of microorganisms or infectious diseases from my patient to my surroundings as well. So um, next, I will be ensuring the client's privacy by the means of closing the door. If the patient is in the private room or if the patient is in the ward, I will be sliding down the curtains. So I'll just um, close the door for you, sir. Okay, so this is for me to ensure the privacy of the client. Now, um, I'll ask you to um, pat your um, your axillary or your underarms dry with the use of this toilet paper. Um, so, can you please um, have one? Okay, so I, I'll ask you to pat your um, underarms. So, the purpose of this is um, to remove any moisture that is existing in the client's underarms. So, uh, moisture can actually... Um, contribute to false or inaccurate readings in our um, taking of the temperature and we don't want that to happen because moisture can um, lower uh, the client's blood pressure, uh, blood pressure um, the temperature so uh, at least can you please discard that okay okay so thank you okay so now um, I'll be um, taking out the th um, thermometer I have clean this and also sanitize this okay okay so um i'll ask you to lift your um just one of your hands okay so i'll be um removing the um clothes slightly okay so i'll be um clicking the um thermometer okay okay so i'll be placing it under the underarms okay can you please okay so for this i will be um asking the patient to um, lay the um, hands across the chest. This is for us to um, ensure that the um, thermometer is not uh, being removed. Okay, so um, according to the manufacturer's note, we will just wait for a few minutes or a, a few seconds um, in order for us to um, hear the beeping sound. Okay, so we'll just wait. Okay, so waiting for that, um, this is for us to elicit accurate findings in taking the temperature. Um, okay, so um, we have here the beep. Okay, so I'll be removing the thermometer, sir. Okay, so your temperature is 36.4. Okay, so I'll be um, turning the temperature off. So I'll be sanitizing it with the use of my alcohol swab. This is for me to ensure that the um, the sanitation of my thermometer. So I'll be um, starting with the body. Okay, body towards the probe. Okay. Okay, so I'm done. Okay, so I'll turn... Um, I'll put it in the appropriate container and also close it and um, have it inside the appropriate um, cabinet. 
Okay, so um, I'll read the temperature. The temperature is 36.4. It is in the normal range and uh, we don't have to do it again because it is in the normal range and if there are instances wherein the temperature is too high or too low, um, we will do the procedure again. So, um, I guess that your temperature is in the normal range. We don't have to do it again. Okay, so um, the temperature is subject to washing again. This is for me to ensure that the ther ther uh, thermometer is clean. Okay, so I'll be documenting the client's um, temperature here in the client's record. So, your, um, thermo uh, your temperature is in the normal range. Okay, so do you have any questions? Okay, thank you. So, today I will be um, assessing the peripheral pulse of the patient. So, prior to any procedures, I must first introduce myself to the client, verify the client's identity, and also to inform the client about the procedures that you will be partaking. So, um, may I know your name, please? Okay, so um, let me introduce myself. My name is Tani A. Galara, and I am your student nurse for today. I will be taking your peripheral pulses. So, um, for the taking, I'll just need to palpate any of your hands. Is that okay? Okay. So, I will now be performing hand hygiene. This is for me to deter any spread of microorganisms or any, um, any infectious diseases. Okay. So, next, I will be providing for the client's privacy. This is for me to ensure um, um, the client's privacy and also confidentiality by the means of if the patient is in the private room, I will be closing the door. Or if the patient is in the ward, I will be um, sliding the curtain. So I'll just um, close the door. Is that okay? okay? So I'll be closing the door. Okay, so now that I have closed the door, I'll be selecting a pulse. So uh, normally, we take the radial pulse if we do our, um, the taking of our pulse rate. So, um, our um, radial pulse is actually located in our wrist. So, um, can you please hand one of your hand? Okay. So, on the, okay, so I'll flex the um, arm of the patient 90 degrees. This is for me to ensure or to elicit a proper functioning for us to um, palpate the, um, the pulse. Okay. So, um, how do we identify the radial pulse? Um, just follow the thumb, so here the thumb, and I'll be sliding it down below the wrist, and then I'll start palpating. So I'll be for, uh, palpating it for a full minute. So um, this is for us to ensure um, accurate findings. So um, if the patient is normal, or for um, efficacy, you can do, um, for you to be efficient, you can do 30, mi uh, 30 seconds, and then you multiply it by 2. Now, but for this video, I'll be doing it for a full minute. Okay, so I'll be palpating. Okay, so now that I have positioned the client, I'll start palpating. Okay. Okay, start. Okay, so I have um, palpated for a whole minute and I have come to a observation of 79 beats per minute. So the uh, um, normal range for our pulse rate is in between 60 to 100 um, BPM. Okay, so I will be um, having it here. Okay, so for the pulse rhythm and volume upon palpation, I haven't noticed any um, irregular pa pattern. So each beat was not weak or thready. So if there is um, irregular heart um, pulses, you must first 
um, record it down in the sheet, and then you uh, report it to your physician. Okay, so um, I haven't um, observed any irregular patterns with your pulse, so that's um, um, that's great. And then um, if there is um, presence of irregular heart rhythm or pattern, you can opt for a ECG. Um, still um, under the supervision of your physician. So I'll be documenting uh, documenting the pulse rate, uh, pulse rate, the rhythm, and also the volume. Okay, so for the um, assessing of the respiration, so um, this can be um, done um, after the um, taking of the pulse rate. So I'll just need to position the client. Okay, so can you please, uh, and then, okay. So um, a very um, good tip is that you can see the respirations in the side. So, okay, so I'll be counting it for a full minute. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm done. So upon observing your respiratory rhythm and also um, the depth and also your um, character of respiration, I haven't seen any um, physical manifestation of um, deep or shallow breathing. So um, after that, I'll be um, documenting the data that I have gathered. So do you have any questions? Okay, so I'll be documenting the data. Okay, so for this video, we will do the taking of the blood pressure. So for the needed equipment, um, we have here the spigomanometer, um, my stethoscope, and also um, alcohol for the, um, um, for the um, sanitation of our hand. So um, I was first ensure if the um, equipments are intact, and also there isn't any presence of um, leak in the um, in the spigomanometer. Okay. Okay, so with regards to my stethoscope, I, I think that it is wor working well. Okay, it's working well. Okay, so we don't want to um, use uh, medical equipment that are faulty, that could elicit um, improper and also um, inaccurate readings. Okay, so um, good morning. Uh, may I ask if uh, may I ask if you have um, smoked or drank for um, the past thirty minutes? Okay, so you haven't. Okay, so um, caffeine and also smoking is one of the reasons why there is inaccurate reading. So you must ask first the client if he or she or they have um, ingested um, caffeine or drinks that have caffeine or have been smoked for the past thirty minutes. Okay, so um, I will um, I will now determine the arm that um, I'll be using. So uh, may I please ask if um, what arm or which arm do you use whenever you take your um, blood pressure? Right. Okay, so in your right. Okay. Okay, so we can elicit accurate results if we use the usual arm that the patient. Um, um, use whenever he or she do the blood pressure taking. So um, prior to performing the procedure, I must first introduce myself to the client and also verify the client's identity. And lastly, I um, introduce the client to the um, procedures that we will be taking. Okay, so um, um, hi, good day. My name is Sunny A. Galara. I am your student nurse for today. And may I please know your name? I'm Okay, so your name is? Um, Harvey A. Galaura. 
Okay, so um, today I will be taking her blood pressure. So it was okay. So um, I'll just need you to um, have your other hand. Okay, so uh, it's the right arm, diba? Okay, so I will now be performing the hand hygiene. This is for me to ensure and also to sanitize my hand to ensure my um, hands is clean because I will be having a direct contact with my patient. Okay, so I will be um, providing the client's privacy by the means of if the patient is in the private room, I will be closing the door and if the patient is in the ward, I will be sliding um, the curtains. This is for me to um, give privacy to my patient. So, um, can I um, close the door for you, sir? Okay. Okay, so for the procedure, we must um, assist the client to a appropriate position now um so um position varies but for my client's case he can properly sit so i'll just let his feet flat on the floor so we must ensure also that the patient is not crossing his or her legs because legs cross at the knee results to elevated blood pressure and we don't want that to happen now next is we must slightly flex the elbow of the patient with palms facing up and also the placement of the hand must be at the heart level Okay, so blood pressure increases when the arm is below the heart level and also it decreases when it is above the heart level. So, dapat naka um, in the um, appropriate heart level lang yung placement ng hands ng ating patient. Now, we wrap the deflated cuff evenly around the upper arm where we have located the brachial artery and apply the center of the bladder directly over the artery. So, um, bladder directly over the artery. This is for us to compress for the reading to be um, accurate. Now next, um, I will now be performing the preliminary palpatory determination of the systolic pressure. So the estimate will tell the nurse or us the maximal pressure to which the sphygmometer needs to be elevated. So first, we need to palpate the brachial artery with the use of our hands. And for example, we can use three, the first three fingers except our thumb because the thumb has its own pulse. So, three fingers, okay? And then we close the valve on the valve and then we pump the cuff until we no longer feel the brachial pulse. So, um, we are palpating the brachial artery while we pump the um, cuff. Okay? So, this gives us an estimate of the systolic pressure. Okay, so next is we release the pressure completely in the cuff and then wait for um, um, an estimated of one or two minutes before making further measurements. Now, um, if after that, we this for us to ensure that the blood trap in the vein um, is released after our preliminary um, palpatory determination. Okay, so uh, we will now be positioning our stethoscope. We must first clean the earpiece, insert the earpiece in our ears so that um, they can slightly forward so that we can um, enable to hear it clearly. And then we place the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the pulse side. So it's either um, diaphragm or the bell. But for this video, I am using the bell. Okay, so next is we place the stethoscope bell directly on the skin and not on the clothing. Why is it um, we must not um, place the, set, uh, the bell or the diaphragm of the stethoscopes on clothing because it can um, elicit other, um, other sounds except for the pulse. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we auscultate for the client's blood pressure by also um, placing the stethoscope bell or diaphragm on the artery and also by pumping. And then after that, we record it. The first sound is um, the crut cuff sound and lastly yung last sound and then after that we record it in our client sheet 